An elephant-sized sloth may be hard to imagine, but in a world over 12,000 years old, they were pretty much the norm. Megatherium, literally meaning great beast, lived up to its name in every way. Even though it fed on plants, this massive ground sloth was one of the largest land mammals to ever exist. Stay tuned and you'll see what I'm talking about. Living in a time when the dinosaurs had long disappeared, this colossal sloth roamed the lands of South America and made even the deadliest predators think twice before taking it on. And you'll understand just how impressive it was once you see what it looked like. To start off, imagine a sloth, but not just any sloth, one that's up to 10 times bigger than the sloths we know today. In fact, Megatherium was so huge that it often compared in size to the Asian elephant. This gigantic sloth weighed around 8,000 pounds or 4 tons and stood nearly 7 feet or 2.1 meters tall at the shoulder. Now keep in mind, that's its height when walking on all four legs. If the Megatherium stood up on its hind legs, it would have stood over 20 feet or 6 meters tall. That was its length from head to tail. And in this position, it would have been twice the size of an elephant. But not all giant sloths were this enormous. These measurements are only for the biggest species in the Megatherium family, known as Megatherium americanum. While other species were a bit smaller, they were still pretty huge. Take for instance the Pliocene Megatherium, also known as the Megatherium altiplanicum, which still weighed over 3,230 pounds, or 1.4 tons. But if there's anything cooler than its size, it's the fact that Megatherium could actually stand on its hind legs. This made it the tallest bipedal, or two-legged mammal, ever. Now you might be wondering how on earth an animal this big could stand on two legs. Well, the Megatherium had a strong and sturdy skeleton, with a large pelvic area and a broad, muscular tail. Its body was shaped like a barrel, making it just as powerful as it looked. And that's not it. Even its claws were massive, with the biggest claw, which was found on its third finger, growing up to 20 inches long, or 1.6 feet. As for the rest of the claws, they were slightly shorter, but still pretty long and curved, making them perfect for digging or grabbing plants. Yes, despite its huge size and frightening looks, Megatherium was actually a plant eater. After all, it was a sloth in the end. But Megatherium was a far more advanced herbivore as compared to modern sloths. As you know, Megatherium was mainly a quadrupedal animal, meaning it walked around on all four limbs. But it could also stand up on its hind legs, using its strong tail for balance, just like kangaroos do. This way, it could reach high branches that other plant eaters simply couldn't get to. And since this giant sloth was willing to put in the effort, you can bet it didn't just eat anything. Megatherium's favorite diet would have been plants like agaves, yuccas, and grasses, so it was a picky eater, as compared to other sloths from the same time period. Its narrow cone-shaped mouth and prehensile lips gave it the ability to grasp and handle plants pretty easily, not to mention those long, sharp claws were also perfect for pulling down branches or digging up plants. Plus, the Megatherium had simple but sharply cusped, pointy teeth, which along with its strong cheek muscles, helped it grind up all kinds of plant materials, from soft leaves to tough twigs. As for its social behavior, Megatherium typically lived and foraged in small groups, but some might have lived alone in caves. They didn't have any natural enemies for millions of years, so they likely lived a diurnal lifestyle, which means they were active during the day. Their stomachs were probably quite adapted for processing fibrous plants, but they still needed a lot of time to digest their food properly. This does not mean it spent its days sleeping and digesting food. Unlike modern sloths, which can sleep up to 20 hours a day, Megatherium was generally more active. They spent a lot of time moving around and eating, since it had a high caloric requirement because of its huge size, and in doing so, Megatherium ended up occupying a huge variety of habitats. It mainly lived in parts of South America, but it wasn't just confined to that region. Its range stretched all the way into Central and North America as well. In fact, it got to the point that during the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs, Megatherium became one of the most common large mammals around. However, it did not hang around in trees like the sloth we see today. 
Considering its gigantic size, it makes sense that Megatherium spent its days crawling on all four legs. As a result, it adapted itself to multiple environments. From grasslands and savannas to dense forests and shrublands, Megatherium could thrive anywhere, as long as there was plenty of vegetation to munch on. However, it was best suited to temperate climates, especially those with open arid or semi-arid habitats. But in the late Pleistocene epoch, things changed a bit for the giant sloth. Its range became more limited, and it was mostly found in the Pampas. This is a huge area of South American grasslands that includes parts of present-day Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. In fact, these are the same areas where we first got to learn about the giant sloth. In 1787, a Dominican friar and naturalist named Manuel de Torres found the first megatherium fossil in Argentina. Later on, the bones were sent to Spain where they caught the attention of George Cuvier, who studied the bones using comparative anatomy, comparing them with other animal bones. Cuvier came to the conclusion that these bones were not of a dinosaur or a bear, but belonged to a sloth. Only this particular sloth would have rivaled some of the biggest prehistoric creatures. He named it Megatherium americanum, which literally translates to Great American Beast. Not just that, Cuvier also had a basic understanding of how this giant sloth lived and moved by looking at its skull, teeth, and shoulder bones. He knew Megatherium was a ground sloth and would have used its strong arms to grab onto plants, which is pretty freaky for a sloth. Still, it wasn't the first of its kind. Megatherium was part of a diverse group of sloths known as ground sloths, which belonged to the superorder Xenarthra. The evolution of these creatures dates back to the late Paleogene and early Neogene periods, around 29 million years ago. During this time, South America was an isolated island continent, which gave these sloths a unique environment to evolve in. The family that Megatherium belongs to is closely related to other extinct groups, like the Nothrotheridae and Megalonychidae. They're also related to the family Bradypodidae, which includes the living three-toed sloths we see today. Early ancestors of all sloths were much smaller and adapted to life in trees, with long limbs and elongated bodies, unlike the more robust Megatherium. Over time, some sloths, like the ground sloths, evolved to become larger and better suited to life on the ground. Megatherium, along with its relatives such as Eremotherium and Megalonyx, were among the biggest and most specialized ground dwellers. They developed a more robust body, powerful limbs, and shorter tails, with limbs adapted to support their massive weight. And as time went on, the Megatherium species only grew larger. For example, the rhino-sized Promegatherium is considered a direct ancestor of Megatherium. Then came the oldest species in the Megatherium genus, M. altiplanicum, which evolved during the Pliocene and was the smallest member of its genus. Later, M. torrigenser emerged, which was medium-sized. And finally, the youngest and largest species, M. americanum, evolved about 400,000 years ago, during the Middle Pleistocene epoch. But this is just one species we're talking about. The rest of the ground sloths lived up to 2.6 million years ago, and they were also among the major animal groups that migrated into North America during the Great American Exchange in the Pliocene. However, Megatherium's main homeland was always South America, and for a long time during its evolution, South America remained an isolated island, cut off from other continents. It's this isolation that allowed the giant ground sloth to grow into one of the largest land animals in its ecosystem. Because of its massive size, Megatherium was safe from most land predators for millions of years. However, things started to change later in the Pliocene when the Central American Isthmus formed. This new land bridge allowed much larger predators to move into South America. Megatherium now had to deal with formidable new threats like saber-toothed cats such as Smilodon and short-faced bears like Octodus, but they were tiny compared to the giant sloth, and adult Megatheriums were generally safe due to their size. This also makes sense because the arrival of new species led to the extinction of many native South American animals, but not Megatherium. These giant ground sloths continued to thrive despite the new competition and predators. They managed to survive and flourish up until about 12,000 years ago, which means they shared their world with early humans. In fact, there's even evidence that humans hunted Megatherium. 
fossils with butchery marks have been found, indicating that humans cut up their meat. One notable site in the Pampas region of Argentina shows clear signs that a megatherium, specifically an M. americanum, was killed and butchered by humans. This is the only known kill site in the Americas so far, but it provides a fascinating glimpse into how early humans interacted with these giant creatures. And from the looks of it, that interaction might have resulted in megatherium's extinction. Megatherium's numbers dropped from six species in the late Pleistocene to zero by the end of the epoch, and as megatherium disappeared, so did 80% of other large South American mammals. Some evidence suggests that changes in their habitat played a role. As the climate changed, the areas where megatherium could live became smaller and more spread out, making it harder for them to survive. And around the same time, humans also arrived in the Americas. One of the earliest known human sites in South America is Monte Verde II in Chile, dating back about 14,500 years. And as luck would have it, megatherium's extinction coincides with the appearance of special tools called fishtail points, which were likely used to hunt large animals. Considering the size and nutritious flesh of the megatherium, along with its peaceful nature, it's quite likely that humans hunted it to extinction. In fact, at a site in Argentina, fishtail points were found with burned bones of M. americanum, suggesting humans used the bones as fuel and possibly hunted these giant slots. There is also direct evidence of humans butchering megatherium. Two M. americanum bones have cut marks, indicating they were butchered by humans. At the Campo Laborde site in Argentina, a single megatherium was killed and butchered with stone tools around 12,600 years ago. Another possible kill site in Argentina also has megatherium bones found with human artifacts, dating from around 11,000 years ago. While the bones were poorly preserved, it's clearly obvious that humans were interacting with these animals. And early humans did not mess around. Even something as giant as the megatherium would have looked like food to them. It's pretty ironic that these giant sloths could intimidate even top predators like Smilodon. And yet, be hunted by humans. Still, Megatherium's legacy lives on as the largest herbivore of its ecosystem and one of the largest land mammals to ever exist. But like all other South American megafauna, this giant sloth also went extinct, with the last Megatherium known to have lived 10,000 years ago. But they did leave behind proof of their existence. Thousands of caves in South America bear the claw marks of these magnificent creatures. So the next time you're around, make sure to check them out. And that's a wrap. Considering the enormous size of this sloth, do you think humans could have really hunted it to extinction? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.